We're starting off with Josh Jacobs. And yes, I know he just signed the fran. Well, they just placed the franchise tag on him, but I still think he's worth talking about here. He's dying league, dynasty league football. Uh, February started, baby. He was RB 14. He's going to be only 25 going into, uh, well, for the 23 season, 17.8 half PPR points per game in 2022, which was RB4 for the year. The big thing for him this year, 10.9% target share on the year, which was the thing he's been missing so far in his career. Finally got that whole backfield to himself, basically, and really ran with it. John, what are we thinking here with Josh Jacobs? Yes, they're, they're putting the franchise tag on him. Uh, he did mention kind of before that he didn't really want to play on the franchise tag. I mean, normally players still end up doing so if they don't work out a deal. Um, what do you think? I think he's definitely going to play because he's playing for what comes next. I think a lot of running backs learned a lot from what Le'Veon Bell did a few years ago and, and how that that worked out financially to a degree, but in the end, it didn't work out as well as he had hoped. So um, it's kind of Josh Jacobs is, is coming with a good season to enter, you know, some negotiation and build some hype. Um, he finishes an RB one or RB two in 71% of his games last season, uh, back-to-back seasons with 60 plus targets, second season with double digit touchdowns, uh, finishes RB three overall for the 2022 season, his best career finish to date. But he's finished as an RB1 in each of his last three seasons. So he's building a resume for whoever's going to want to come to the table when and if he does approach free agency. Yeah. For me, like I like this startup price. I don't know if I'm trying to necessarily go out and trade for Josh Jacobs at this point in the year, though. Skylar, what are you thinking? Yeah, well, I basically never want to go and trade for running backs. It's just with the way everything is right now, the... The way the market is heading, you're going to have to pay close to two firsts for Josh Jacobs, and it's just not a price I want to pay for almost any running back. There's maybe five or six guys where I'm comfortable putting out two firsts worth for them. I would agree that the starter price on Josh Jacobs is pretty nice. I mean, the four or five turn is a comfortable spot. If you lock in a top 12 quarterback in those first couple rounds, you follow it up with some receivers, maybe Garrett Wilson, Amara St. Brown. You can come around at the four or five turn taste Josh Jacobs and then the best player available it feels like a, it feels like a good pick it feels like a player who's maybe like a Joe Mixon years back where he might not be as exciting as he was this last year where he finished as RB3 and he was 71% of the time like John said finishing at that high mark but the last season's past where he wasn't all too exciting still snook into that top 12 when you know that that's kind of the low end for him and now you know if Tushan Veras goes on a size or he is getting these targets and acting upon them that you can have a bigger season. It's a player who I'm very comfortable having as maybe my one or two backs in the room. If they're a round or two cheaper than those top guys I have to spend. So in the startup, I do have some, some interest in that sense in trades. There's probably other ways that go about filling my RB two spot or my RB one spot um, with Josh Jacobs personally, him going back to Vegas, I think is just the best outcome for him. It's the team that has believed in him. They finally use him the way we would. And that coaching team is still there in Vegas to work with him, whether or not we love them and what the team has done. (laughs) He is still there. It is an important part of that offense. So with them moving away from Derek Carr, he could be somebody they lean on. If it's a rookie quarterback, there's rumors of them moving up to potentially one or sitting tight where they are. And maybe a guy like Levis is on the board. They would be a very interesting spot uh, for quarterback to go. I think they'd be leaning on Josh Jacobs or, if they, those don't come to fruition, or maybe they do take a guy, if they say put and they sign like a Jimmy Garoppolo, who's kind of like a Derek Carr light, I also think that bodes well for Josh Jacobs. You know, if Jimmy Garoppolo ends up in Vegas, which I think his face kind of fits Vegas out here. <laughs> if you look at the, the three seasons where he played at least 10 starts, his team was top 10 in touchdown percentage through the ground, top 10 in rushing attempts, top 10 in yards per game at the running back position. In 2022, 2021, and 2019, the only exception is the touchdown percentage for San Francisco this last year. But again, it was still middle of the pack. So I think if Jimmy Garoppolo is is the guy there, Josh Jacobs, it looks very good for him. His teams historically tend to lean on Josh Jacobs. The coaching staff who was here now leaned on him last year. And, And again, I think if it's a rookie quarterback, it makes a lot of sense to abuse and abuse Josh Jacobs, whether they extend him or not. You've got a, a you know a rookie off the first contract. That's kind of the motif here. So I do like Josh Jacobs coming back to Vegas. I think that keeps him 
it moves him into that tier we have right above um, some of the veterans he's in here with, you know, DeAndre Swift, Javante Williams, uh, Jameer Gibbs, depending if you want youth of these guys, I think he fits right in that group. I'd rather have him on my team than the Nick Chubb, Ramondre Stevens, and Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry group that's there after. So he's pretty comfortable in his spot for me. I have him as RB11, so RB14 in a vacuum, of course. Sounds pretty all right. John, do you like that startup price? Yeah, I like the startup price a lot, and I actually think this is a good opportunity uh, to trade him if you roster him. And I say that I'm someone that is way more likely to get out on a player a year early than wait and potentially lose value in the coming season. So I see a situation like this where you look at his his startup ADP since 2019. He came in 2019. He was RB15. Uh, 2020, he was RB9. 21, he was 18. And then um, I might have missed a year there. And then but he's he's coming into this season right now as ADP is that that RB twelve ish range, you know RB twelve to fourteen range, and I I think that's a good opportunity to sell while the value is there, and I'm way more likely to sell running backs than I am to hold them. So if mm-hmm. I if I roster him, I'm taking the good season, the the return with the coaching staff, the the higher than normal startup price. I if I can cash this, I'm going to cash it and try to get something back. Sure. I think it depends on your league, right? I mean, if you're in a league that still values running backs like that, where I can get two firsts out of Josh Jacobs, absolutely sign me up. I think the market overwhel- overwhelmingly has come down on running backs in the last few seasons, as well as in drafts. Like it was cool a couple of years ago to trade up, to trade down and collect value. But in recent years, everyone and their mom is trying to trade down in drafts. It hasn't worked quite the same with running backs before. It was easy to move. You got Jameer Gibbs coming into the class. We know what he is as a prospect. You got Josh Jacobs coming off an RB3 season. You'd sell Josh Jacobs for Gibbs in a first. It was easy. It was like clockwork. Those deals don't seem to be there in a lot of leagues. Manners have gotten a little sharper on that. Sure, if you're in a league, you can get two firsts out of them, or you can grab one of these guys, maybe you know a Tucker or a Charbonnet, and get a first on top of it. I really like that option as well. It all depends on that. And of course, if you can move him for a young wide receiver, like some of the names we mentioned earlier, I love it as well. I'm just saying I wouldn't be forcing a trade of Josh Jacobs because I think his production kind of fits fits well for the price. So that's that's why I said I don't mind him on my team. Yeah, John, I was gonna say, what's like um what's the price you're looking for? What's the lowest amount you're you're selling Jacobs for? If I can get a first and a and a player, and you know, Skylar kind of mentioned it. If you can, if you can grab one of these younger guys, or if, or if I can turn him into a, a receiver that has, you know, top fifteen appeal, that you know is only a couple years into the league, where I know that 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 potential can outlast whatever you know marginal loss or, or value I'm giving up in return. I'm willing to do that. So um, I'm trying to think of specifics. If if I could move him for you know, uh, a Jahan Dotson and, and a mid first, you know, I think that would be, that would be on the plus like side that. if I could make that happen. Yeah. I'm into that. We're, we're Jahan Dotson fans here. 